Hey guys, welcome back. So getting into the new Killmonger five part mini series, which for the most part is really just zooming in and focusing on his journey. But Brian Hill is doing this in a completely new way where it's finally the story of Killmonger instead of the story of Black Panther, which mentions Njataka somewhere along the way. And I'm really excited about this. So I wanted to talk about it a little bit. But if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so like I mentioned, this story is like your untold origin of Killmonger. Because even though we've been given different versions of his origin, and many of which within the comics telling the same story, really leading up to that same battle at Warrior Falls, and mainly because Njataka defeating the Black Panther is one of his most iconic feats for his character in the comics to this day, especially with other tellings of that story later having him become the Black Panther, joining the Avengers, so on and so forth. But in this new Killmonger series, which really feels like Brian Brian Hill is taking the opportunity to give us a miniseries much like Rise of the Black Panther which we got not long ago from Evan Narciss and ta Coates. Because Rise of the Black Panther has a few points that tie into this Killmonger series so I'll definitely be pointing back to this series as a reference but with starting the Killmonger 5 part miniseries it feels a lot like the Killmonger miniseries is just going back and giving us a more detailed narrative from his perspective which is much deserved and I also appreciate Brian Hill even mentioning while talking about his approach with writing this how he's not going to just give us a carbon copy of what we saw in the Black Panther film which was great by the way but I like that Brian Hill is just taking the character and his history from the comics and building on top of that foundation and in my opinion with a little inspiration from the films but more the narrative connecting with the previous issues that we've seen Killmonger in. But as far as where we pick up with Killmonger, where we start to dive into his narrative and into what I would say is more so understanding where his hatred comes from and actually seeing the process of him grow into this freak of nature who's accomplished so many of his own objectives off of pure ambition and drive. And I love that it starts with him finishing up at MIT and us seeing him having this conversation with his guidance counselor who's pretty symbolic of how the world has treated Njataka to this point and not just from the Western Hemisphere but his own people as well. Because going back to his original origin, Origin, when Ulysses Claw went to Wakanda stealing vibranium and murdering a number of Wakandans throughout his excursions, Njataka's family was amongst those people. And from there, being that Njataka was very young and knowledgeable about Wakanda, for that reason, Ulysses Claw had also taken him and used him for his mind in order to further his own objectives, which really made Claw and also Ndemwe, who we'll talk about in a little bit, but it really made the two of them Njataka's first guidance counselor, so to speak. And it's pretty crazy because when he sits there and talks with his guidance counselor, the conversation kind of goes to this picture on the wall of her and her family and she lost her parents to like an industrial accident but after that she said she was okay because there's people around who was there to help her out and guide her along the way and for the case of Njataka his first guidance counselor really was Ndemwe and we found out back during the miniseries Rise of the Black Panther that Ndemwe was the son of Tanzo who previously was a member of the border tribe who had fought T'Chaka the father of T'Challa who had fought and challenged him twice to become Black Panther and failed and as a result of him failing and his injuries being so severe, since then he couldn't return to the border tribe. And because of his pride, he wouldn't take help from Wakanda. I guess he didn't want to be on Wakandan welfare. But it's from there that Ndemwe had his own hatred for the standing king. And from there solicited his assistance to like Baron Von Strucker with Hydra and Ulysses Claw, which also resulted in King T'Chaka building a relationship with Howard Stark, which is where the significance of Long Island will come back in later. But during the time when Ndemwe was working for Ulysses Claw, Ndemwe is the one who actually killed in Jataka's family. At least that's the narrative that we got in The Rise of the Black Panther. But in Killmonger's narrative, Mdemwe's explanation is still similar to the point of he was the one who told Ulysses Claw that he should spare young Njataka because of his valuable mind and the number of ways that he could also be a contribution to what he was doing. And with Mdemwe being one of his first guidance counselors, so to speak, and almost like a mentor or a father figure, it was from him that Njataka learned early on that he wanted to be his own guidance and not just used by everyone else. And we're shown that a lot of this unfolds at a young age for Njataka when he confronted Ndemwe who was the first person that Njataka had killed but not before telling Ndemwe that he was the first person who taught Njataka how to lie, how to manipulate, and how to kill in all of which which Njataka just learned through observation. But with Ndemwe lying and saying that he didn't personally kill Njataka's family and the accumulation of his lies and killing getting Njataka where he was at, it was early on that Njataka took it into his own hands to determine what his value truly is and how he would use it. 
and rather than him having these different versions of guidance counselors come into his life who really and truly step in just to make him a tool to reach their own objectives and fulfill their own ambitions at any cost and Jataka at this point once he's finished up MIT he is well developed into the perspective of making sure that every situation is fully to his benefit rather than the benefit of others and this is something he also sees in his guidance counselor who works for MIT and she meets up with him in order to tell him where MIT wants him to go but rather he meets up with her to decline these job offers and instead gives her an offer that she does not refuse and she obliges because she was mutually attracted to him but beyond that mutual physical attraction Killmonger had no desire to explore anything else with her or even entertain the idea of him being another job placement that she successfully scored for her quota but after their one night stand and just moving forward from here Killmonger moves forward to his obsession with killing Ulysses Claw and for Killmonger this hunt is very comparative to the tale of Moby Dick or at least to the extent of comparison of his ambitious goal to hunt this villain who has not only become extremely powerful at this point but also very difficult for most to track and even find his location but just as a quick catch up to make sure everybody knows which claw we're talking about in this case because he's had a couple of different origins but the one that connects here is the one that we spoke of building off the history with claw working with Mdemwe but later getting a major upgrade when he returned to Wakanda and merged his sound converting technology with vibranium and he used that machine to create huge animal constructs to fight the Black Panther and the Fantastic Four but after being defeated and trapped under a bunch of rubble with the decision to either die here like starve to death or crawl in this machine and also possibly die <laughs> or become incredibly powerful he chose option B which caused him to come out as solidified sound and a lot harder to kill which we will find out in other Black Panther comics and I'm sure we'll see more of in the Killmonger series but upon tracking down Ulysses Claw in one of his secret meetups and exchanges Killmonger who has planned it out in his mind for this to be his night of revenge but instead of him getting that revenge his assassination attempt is botched in which I'm not really sure how well it would have went anyway given that even when the rifle was kicked out of his hand the bullet just bounced off a of claw's head but when this happens the young lady who catches him who's only recognized by the name Knight and not to be mistaken for Misty Knight she initially asks him who he's working for and he tells her he's working alone and she tells him that she believes him into which shortly after she's given the order to take him in so she knocks him out and does just that but it's here that we find out that she's part of a group that names themselves after separate chess pieces with her being Knight, another member being named King, and the third member being named Rook. But as it stands at this point in time, this particular team is just one of your resources on a list of many that work for Wilson Fisk. And with Killmonger being stopped in his attempt to kill Ulysses Claw, this was only done so Claw would be spared because for Wilson Fisk, who doesn't necessarily agree with Claw, but for the moment, Wilson Fisk would rather him not dead because he makes a lot of money doing business with him. And with them catching Killmonger and bringing him in, initially you would think that they would just kill him. But the reason that they didn't and they instead ultimately let him go is because they're intrigued that this random person figured out how to find Claw so for that reason Wilson Fisk let him go only to have him followed so they can find out more about him and I feel bad for the dude that followed Killmonger and got killmongered and like straight up dude got murdered with a window and not like he was thrown through a window but dude was murdered with a window but even with Eric Killmonger being released, it was the task of this team to find out who he was, where he stayed, where he was from, because Wilson Fisk wanted to know. But even more so, King, who is the leader of this team, is also looking to expand. So he sent the guy who was pretty much trying out for the team to follow Killmonger and, you know, spoiler alert, he didn't make the team. You know, because part of the rules of being on the team is you got to be alive and, you know, dude doesn't qualify anymore. But when this happened and King got to know a bit more about Killmonger, and as a result, he offered Eric Killmonger the opportunity to work with them and of course he initially declines and he finds out that these aren't ordinary people <laughs> and with his mind King picks up Eric Killmonger and throws him out the window not to kill him he breaks his fall which was still a painful one I'm sure but only to be met outside by Knight who's just like get cleaned up and come with us and she says this in spite of not being a hundred percent on board with him joining and granted she did see something in him prior to when she didn't kill him which is something that even surprised King knowing that she could have being that she's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Spider-Man but on top of that knowing that she would have just because how she 
usually handles random people getting in the way. But it's from here we do see that he explores the idea of joining with this team as he goes with them to this beach house on Long Island. But even with being physically with them, we see him spend much of his time apart from them, praying to his father who he's not truly connected to and that having to do mostly with the separation from Wakanda, him not being the Black Panther and him not having access to the Necropolis. But even still, he gets a response from Bass, who he still refers to as Mother Bass, which we've also seen him do a number of times up to this point. But instead of hearing his father respond, he hears the voice of Bass telling him to put his war down and return to Wakanda. And even at that same moment, Knight walks outside telling Eric that they have a job for him in which he's welcome to join, but if he steps out of line, she'll take him out herself. But with him giving these options of what he's quote, supposed to do, I gotta just say, man, I just love the way that Juan E. Ferreira illustrates this particular panel. Because now that we understand who Eric Killmonger is at this point in his life, we're finally getting to see his point of view. Although it's a really messed up one, it's still interesting to understand why he will become who he becomes. But a couple other things that I also want to get into before we wrap up is one, we do know that he will work with this team for a moment in time, and it's very likely that he'll do so with the motivation to learn the different crime connections, get access to weapons, and become a better killer. But what I also think is interesting from a chess perspective, being that that is how this group names its different members, is that I believe the symbol that they gave him was the symbol of your pawn, which has me even more eager to see where this goes because Eric Killmonger will agree to be what you think he is but only for long enough for him to get what he wants and this is something i can't wait to see explored further because it makes you start to think like is he worse than the people that are using him and if he is is he worse because he comes out on top or is it just because we know eventually what he'll become and it's because of that we just have the staple in our mind that eric killmonger is the bad guy or maybe it's because he killed a lot of people <laughs> you know that that probably could be it or you never know maybe a lot of those kills were like roaches man and we just don't know that <laughs> but no we know he definitely did kill a lot of people People, and that's not good any way you look at it. But the thing I'm drawn to most about getting into his origin and getting to learn more about Eric Killmonger, it's more so the telling of why. Why do you see the world the way you do? Why do you think the way that you do? And that's one of the main things I look forward to as we get deeper into a solo series. But one of the things I wanted to point out that we were given in Rise of the Black Panther when we had seen a much older Eric Killmonger who then explained the change in his name, which I believe we'll see to be the same reasoning within the Killmonger series, but it was within the Rise of Black Panther series that we had found out that the reason for him changing his name to Eric Killmonger had part to do with him coming up with a name that was simpler since Americans would mess up his real name all the time. And that's why even throughout his time at MIT was he even his guidance counselor referred to him as Eric, so on and so forth. And I'm sure that in its entirety, the name that he's created for himself is more so based on the new path that he's created for himself, opposed to the path that others would want him to take. But I just wanted to point that out for those who are probably wondering why is he being called Eric Killmonger so early on, but throughout his history and the other issues, we've been given that explanation. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below, and we'll do it again in the next one. All right, later.